I'm in the city of Chester today, in the northwest of England, and I've come to Overly Old Cemetery. As I enter the gates, I'll just give you a view as I come in. There's an interesting one here. This is to William Bidolf Cross, and he was known by his galvanic cures and the maker of his own coffin. Uh, the story is that it was actually made out of matchsticks. There's a very tall one here, and on the front is a coat of arms. Uh, but the inscription is too worn to uh, see exactly who it was, presumably a local lord of the manor, a big landowner. Fascinating carving on the top of this stone with the three flowers. And this is remembrance of the child, Martha Harvey Parker. One here close to the bushes and leaning at a rather crazy angle is for Percival Green, a schoolmaster who died at Chester in 1869, aged just 31 years. Here's a sad one. Edward Atkins, eldest son of Edward and Anne Jones, accidentally drowned while bathing. 1878, aged 16. The stone was erected by the Bible class of St John's Church and other friends. I always like the less common surnames. So here's one to Biggins. Mary Biggins and her husband Frederick Biggins. Just looking at the uh, less common design of a stone here, done in a sort of dark, almost slate-like material. And the inscription, with a lot of space around it, just stands out amongst the other stones. And this is William Owens and his wife, Lavinia Elizabeth. And here, amongst all the older stones, is one of the war graves. And this one is to J. Manifold, Cheshire Regiment, 1919, age 23. One here, very much out of area. It says she was of Felmington in Norfolk. And again, we've got this uh, darker stone, which doesn't seem to attract the lichen at all, and therefore makes it very easy to read. A more recent one here for Richard Price, 1960, but the engraving shows the bridge the river and the boat moored in the river. Next to him is William Schoen, coach builder of this city. Always nice when they tell you a little bit about the person. This one is to Felix Thomas, for 43 years superintendent of the Chester Industrial School, 1828 to 1903. Elijah J. Hudson, the director of Arnott & Co in Dublin, erected with the kind permission of his widow by the employees of the firm. This one is quite warm. Corporal Thomas Jones, but the carving above gives his helmet and a couple of other pieces of his insignia, or his uniform. He died in 1892. There's a great slab of a tomb here, and this is to the memory of the Reverend William Harrison. One here with the dove on the branches of a tree. This one's to William Berry, and it says, Eternity how long? Life how short. You can't really argue with eternity how long. This one here is leaning at a crazy angle and it mentions that Harriet was the wife of John Ward, a wine merchant of the city. Not only a rather unusual surname, but tells us a little bit about what he did in life. 
for 29 years manager of the Chester Gas Company and it's erected by the workmen of the company. This one is interesting for the precision on the inscription. He departed this life at 7 o'clock on Easter Sunday morning. It's not often you get a time given for the death. One here to a local important person, Daniel Lytle Hewitt, alderman and three times mayor of this city, who died in 1828. Nearby is this very large and elaborate memorial, but I don't easily see a name on it. Almost certainly a member of the church, I think, a bishop, a dean or something similar. I'm sure the local people will know, but a very elaborate memorial. One here I don't recognise immediately, Henry Shaw Wally, ESL, Major, St G R E V, I think, who died in 1904. Lieutenant Colonel Edward Holt Clegg, JP, of Backford Hall near Chester. In the woods here is M. A. Tucker, Women's Royal Air Force, 1918. And it has a wreath put on there by the members of Handbridge Women's Institute. Don't often see Women's Royal Air Force in 1918. The Royal Air Force had only just been formed by that date. Before that it was the Royal Flying Corps. Be interested to know more about this lady. In the woods here, there's one here for the Vicar of Tewkesbury. What he was doing here, anyone knows. His name, surname appears to be Wardell. Opposite is one that seems to be for Venables. Uh, and there's quite a lot about what he did, but unfortunately the inscription is not easy to read. Uh, no doubt it will be listed on one of the websites. Uh, find a grave will be a good one to look for it. A little story on this one. Captain Thomas Parry, husband of Grace Parry, and he was drowned at Portishead in 1881, aged 34 years. Nearby we have a war grave to Fusilier A. Roberts of the War Welsh Fusiliers, 1943, aged 44. Another story on this one. Richard, the beloved husband of Ellen Fawkes and son-in-law of the above, was shipwrecked in St Ives Bay, 1893, aged 32. Beneath that we have Sergeant John Noel Fawkes, only son, who was killed in action, 1917, aged 23. And a couple of very sad stories on that stone. Corporal Joseph Rowlands, 23rd Royal Welsh Fusiliers, a Crimean veteran. He served his country faithfully at the Siege of Sebastopol and the Indian Mutiny. I include this one because it's got rather a nice carving of a flower at the top. Very well done. And it's to Harry beloved son of John and Sarah Cunnington and he died aged 26. Nicely done stone. One here to Motty's head. They've got their infant son Alfred Ernest and also Frank, son killed in action April the 1st 1917. Again uh, a less common surname, Totty. William Totty and Ellen Totty. One here by the hedge that uh, borders the lane. George Goodfellow, aged 11 years. Henry Berry, aged 8 years, who were drowned, falling through the ice, trying to save a fellow playmate at Hull. This memorial was erected to perpetuate their memory by friends and playmates. One here commemorates John Dugdale, for 25 years the engineer of the Chester Waterworks Co. Died 1891. 
This stone here is for John Jonas and then his wife, Mary Jonas. But the interesting bit is the bit beneath where it says she was the mother of 33 children. Now I'm told by some people that work in the graveyard here that she had 15 sets of twins and therefore presumably three singles to go with it. And a very poignant one here of a young child who died as a child and the local children still bring flowers to commemorate her. Well, I visit a lot of graveyards and cemeteries, churchyards, and they vary a lot in their interest. This one is absolutely fascinating. The stonemasons, the monumental masons, uh, put a lot more information on the stones than is usual. The stones are of quite a variety of designs. And it's a beautiful little cemetery because it's got various hills and uh, dips in it really is worth coming to explore. The cemetery is actually divided by a road and this is the part they call the Old Cemetery and I've spent up to now all my time in. I'll just drop over the road and give you a few shots of the newer part of the cemetery. We've crossed the road now into the newer part of the cemetery and I'll just give you a panoramic view as we come in through the gates. One that took my eye as I walk up the main path and part way down James Ewart, 2nd Lieutenant of the 8th King's Liverpool Regiment. He was killed in action 1918 aged 34 and he's buried in France. There's a war grave tucked amongst the more traditional stones. This is Captain Thomas Arthur Ellis, Royal Air Force 1918, aged 25, and the relatives have paid a little extra to put the words at the bottom on the stone. That would, that would cost the relatives money to have that extra engraving put on. From memory, I think it was a few pence per letter. It's a very large, hefty slab of stone here as a memorial. Interesting sort of uh, depiction at the top there. And then down here it mentions, further down, Frederick Lewis Copplestone, Lieutenant Commander Royal Navy Submarine D2, who was lost in the North Sea. And then beneath that, his son-in-law, Copplestone Boffy, Command of the Royal Navy killed HMS Defence. Andrew Alexander Armstrong, 44th Canadian Cameron Highlanders, killed in action 1917. Beneath that is Jack Armstrong, Royal Flying Corps, killed in a flying accident, 1918, aged 22. Below that is Robert Wallace Armstrong, who died 1927 at Katoomba, New South Wales in Australia. And there's a couple more names underneath. This one mentions Samuel Lloyd, their son, who died in Rouen, Hospital of France, while serving in the Royal Engineers, 1917, age 29. Well, I'm going to call that for a stop for this video. I will say, as someone who visits a lot of cemeteries across the country, I found this one one of the most interesting, and I would recommend coming to visit it and coming and looking at some of the memorials. It's a wonderful spot and a very interesting place. Chester itself, of course, is a, is a great city to come and see. But when you're here, do come and have a look at the cemetery. Till the next time.